Hey, beta test users of the new Maven strap, Michael the Maven here. Uh, this is going to be a really unprofessional video. You should have gotten your Maven strap at some point. It's going to come in a bag like this. It's going to also have the strap in it, obviously. This is the thinner model. This is the uh, fishtail weave. I think this is really good for mirrorless cameras. A couple of you guys got these. The vast majority of you asked for the, uh, the wider straps, but we have basically three colors right now, uh, red, purple, and blue. We have the black ones coming in soon. Uh, I wanted to show you guys a few things before we get started so you're aware of what this amazing material is called paracord. Paracord originally was used to make parachutes, and it is extremely strong, 550 pound test strength. Now, the thing that's important to remember is that if you've got a wide strap, there's 60 feet of paracord. It's all continuous. And if you find the end where it was sealed off, the way you open this is you just cut these ends right where it was sealed, and this will unravel. Okay, so 60 feet of paracord on the wide strap. On the thin straps, we got 40 feet. And on the, the uh, wrist straps, it's about 10 feet. Now, taking all that into consideration, I'm gonna cut this so you guys can see it better. Let's take a look at the inside of this. This is pretty interesting. So there is a nylon sheath that goes around it, but on the inside, there are seven smaller ropes. Okay, so seven times 60 is 420 feet of this. Okay, stuff, you'd have to connect it. But the other thing is this is made up of three strands. So in terms of the applications in the amount of rope and twine, tinder, tourniquet, uh, lashing, all kinds of uses. Paracord is super amazing. And in, in a, a standard camera strap just isn't gonna do what 60 feet of paracord can do. So this is one of the ideas behind using paracord as a camera strap. And I have more designs coming. Uh, I just wanted to get feedback from you guys in terms of how these work and what you like and what you don't like and what you think could be improved. So we've, a couple of you guys were actually sent some of the older versions that we don't use anymore. Um, I think those are defective. I'll show them to you in a second. This is probably gonna be a longer video. If I can undo this knot. So something you'll notice is that the ends these are 11 centimeters long. We've gone through many versions to get to this point. And the reason is, these are 11 centimeters and they're not braided like this, is because this allows you to adjust the length of your strap. So if you were to tie a single knot, that is going to reduce the length of it about an inch and a half. You'll notice 11 centimeters, probably closer to seven and a half or eight. And you can also do a double knot. I'll try to turn this around so you can see. Here it is. So come around. We're going to go through it a second time. And then I'm going to come out the top here. That's your double knot. And you can see it took up pretty much the whole uh, length of the loop. Almost the whole length. About maybe two-thirds of it. Okay, so if you want to make it shorter, use a double knot. This is how we adjust the length. I personally like the camera on my hip. Uh, some people like it a little higher, a little bit lower. But when you get your single or your double knot, if you decide to use a carabiner, I recommend having it up tight against the carabiner so the carabiner isn't um, sliding around and flopping around everywhere. And so that is basically how you would, you would attach a carabiner. That's what I would recommend. There's all kinds of ways to do it. If you wanted to you know, just be sloppy and and I know some people that actually do this. So come around like that, and then they clip it in. It's not the prettiest knot. And they just bring this loop around like that. It's another way to do it. So I'm gonna do a single knot real quick and show you the length difference. I think the single and the double knots are pretty much the easiest knots in the world to tie almost anybody can and should be able to do them. So we are marketing these as utility straps. So they can be used on cameras, but they're also 
I have a friend who uses them on his bow for his bow and arrow. I've seen them on purses. And so you can control the length by a few inches by tying knots in them. That's the first thing. So I'm going to show you all these cameras I have set up here. There's my desk. There's my fleet of cameras. And you'll notice most of them have these key rings on them. The key rings come in the pack. They should be in there. The key rings are pretty strong. They're about 15 to 20 pounds capacity. And so if you have two of them on a camera, it's about 30 or 40 pounds of lift strength. I kind of recommend that if, you, if you're going to go really heavy is to try to find something a little bit stronger. So I know some guys have, you know, like a, a 5D Mark IV with a 70 to 200. Should handle it, but I would probably err on the side of something a little bit stronger. And uh, once you're set up like this, you just basically clip in both sides. So super fast, easy way to clip into a camera. You can take... Oh, wait, you got to lock them down, obviously. Um, that's the idea of it. And there is there are some concerns. This is the OMD EM1 Mark II. You see how low this attachment point is? You just want to be mindful that it's not rubbing on the camera. And some users, as well as myself, are concerned that if you put it into like a camera bag and you put something hard on top of it like this and you're smashing it into the camera, it could, could scratch it, could damage it. So... That's one of the things we're trying to find out with the beta testers is, is, are the carabiners a great idea for cameras? If they are not, what I would recommend is just taking them off. If you know you're going to have your camera strap on there pretty much all the time, just take them off and thread them through the rings, just like that. Tie it back down and that, that will be no problem. The straps are beautiful. So if you want to go that route, if you don't like the carabiners, take these, clip them onto your camera bag and if you have a need to use a strap in another way you'll have them and it'll be quick and easy to attach them so that's kind of the overview is that you can thread them through the ring or you can clip on with the carabiner just give me some feedback in terms of how it's doing i don't want any cameras being hurt or damaged this is why we're having a beta test uh, let me talk about the carabiners real quick so the carabiners have gone through several revisions. This is the, the one that we decided to finally send out to the testers. These are the black ones, the, the ones that I, I personally use. Pretty much the same thing. And we also have these little guys, these smaller, lighter, aluminum branded ones, Michael the Maven. Originally, this was the design. We were going to use these guys, but we had one user, one user, <laughs> out of the five or six in the alpha test who said that the uh, key ring almost popped off. It was like sideways or something like that. And it freaked her out. And that freaks me out too. So I don't know how I can get like that without bumping it. And there are some other little things like these pins aren't the smoothest. So I honestly don't think we're going to end up using these guys in the final product, but I've included them with a beta pack. If you guys want to have them as keychains or you're using your your strap on an accessory bag or something else, but probably not the great idea for the camera, but you ha they're included. But I just wanted to explain that um, we're not gonna use these, I don't think. I think they look great. Sarah, one of the first alpha test users, I cannot get her to stop using hers. She just left it on the camera and she says she loves them. So just trying to get some feedback about things of that nature. You're probably wondering why these blue ropes 30 centimeters of blue rope, I believe. 20, 30, something like that. These are included if you would like to attach them to your camera in a different way. If you do not want to use these rings, and you know, this is something that I'm struggling with is figuring out what the best way to connect to the camera is without wear. So I'll show you a super simple solution here. Again, single knot. You can do a double knot if you want. Uh, these are going to be longer, and they're easy to trim in terms of the length. You uh, just cut it and use a lighter to <laughs> seal the end off. That's all there is to it, and it, it seals it completely. So, you know what? Let's do this right. If I was going to put this on my 5D Mark III or 5D Mark IV, I'd probably go with a little bit smaller loop something like 
that. So I'm gonna have to adjust this. Turn this guy so you guys can see this. I'm using my iPhone to film all this. Uh, the way I do this, the paracord on these thin kind of metal things on Canon, some Nikon cameras, paracord will totally go through there. And all you have to do is place it on top and then you get a screwdriver and just gently push it in there. See how easy it's coming in? <laughs> it was actually a little hard. I was trying to be funny. Um, just feed it in through there like that and then grab it on the other side. This is how I do it if you would prefer a paracord connection. So when that comes through, guess what? There is no way uh, that that is going to come undone. And what you can do is you can trim this off, uh, seal the ends, and if you're committed to it, put a couple drops of super glue on it. That knot will never come off, okay? The thing you'd have to just to make sure is that there's uh, not wear through that part of it, and then you could totally just come in with your carabiner and clip in this way. And this way, it's you got a little bit more distance. You could even tie a knot in this part. I know you couldn't. That would take a little bit more work. You could tie a knot in here and feed them down and then tie this knot. But at least this would be a cloth version and it's not rubbing against the camera. It's just another option. And again, 550 pounds of strength. So if you're going with a very, very heavy camera, this is probably going to be the way to go for now. And there are so many cool different knots that you could you could uh, tie. Um, but if you go with the knot route, let's see how... <laughs> if you go with the knot route, just make sure that you are not doing something like this. See how that we have the key ring? And see how that knot can kind of work its way through there? So make sure that if you do go this route to do it on this, this these thin slats, these metal slats that aren't going to are going to give way. So real quick, let me show you an alternative knot if you're not crazy about this guy. It's a little big, a little bit bigger knot. And it, maybe we'll have some more of these knot tying videos. I don't know. Let me show you what a bowline is. Probably the greatest knot of all time, in my opinion, because for its applications and what it, how it works. The bowline starts with just a simple loop, just like this. You have this line that comes down. So you have this Thing, this one strand behind the loop, very important. All we're going to do is take this guy, thread him through like this. See how simple this is? And then we're going to go around the tree and come back in front right here. See that? That's the bowline. That's all there's to it. And I'll, and I'll tell you why it's such a great, make sure that you have your, your loop kind of there. Otherwise, it's going to disappear. This knot uh, is used in climbing. It is extremely secure because what happens is if it's done correctly, the tighter you pull on it, the stronger the knot becomes. The knot will, will not come undone if it's done right. See, I'm pulling like as hard as I can, and I can't get it to slide. Now, sometimes you see this, this nylon rope will pop out like this. So let me show you how to fuse that. Just get some scissors if you've never done this before. Paracord is so much fun. Your kids can make paracord bracelets and sell them, no problem. You know, fiber. I have the air conditioning on, so it's like going everywhere. It's probably not the way to do it. I usually just push it against the lighter there. It's resealed. So that's how you would solve that. But this would be an alternative. You could use this to attach to whatever gear you wanted to. Put a couple drops of, yeah, see, I'm, I'm a pretty strong guy, and I cannot get that thing to come off. So if I was going to put it on a camera or something, I would just trim off the ends like this. So real quick, I wanted to show you guys probably the easiest way to deal with these rings. There's going to be a temptation to use your fingernails to do the whole process. I am definitely not a fan of that. I just clip it onto a screwdriver like this. So if you can see what I'm doing here, when you put it on a screwdriver or something like that and you just tilt the ring down, see how it's opening it up? It's making it wider. This is, or you can even twist the ring like that a little bit. By far the easiest way to do this. So let me see if I can demonstrate this. And all I'm gonna do is just turn, twist the ring a little bit. That's like, 
the easiest thing in the world, I think. So if you're gonna going to be taking these on and off, just use a screwdriver. They're just far better than your fingernails. And so there, now it's on. If you are a hand strap user, so here's one of the hand straps. These are have been requested by a lot of people actually, which is interesting because I've I would never personally use a hand strap, but some people love them. Is you're gonna thread it through the slip knot right here, just like that. And then when you attach to the camera, you don't need a carabiner. I mean, these are just so easy to put on, it's ridiculous. Basically gonna thread it through there like that. You take your wrist wrap, that's it. That's all there is to it. And so you have a, a slip knot wrist, wristband, like this. There it is. Easy peasy, but we still uh, include the carabiner if you decide you wanna use it to, I don't know, carry something else, you know, an easy clip, fast way to connect to something else. It's in, it's in the package if you want it. We include one of these with every hand strap. Have a bunch of fun colors in these guys. Uh, pretty small, light, easy, super strong. So real quick, I also wanted to show you some of the older versions. This is one of the first test versions. You see how we had them weaved? into the carabiner. You couldn't take the carabiner off. Hated it. But look at the cool colors. All, there's so many cool different colors we can get with these guys. And then we had, some of you guys were actually accidentally sent some of these. Uh, a design that miscommunication with the manufacturer where they weaved these little silver stainless steel carabiner. You can't take them off. Look at that. And these are kind of cool. The problem is the pin, it's a little bit too pokey for me. I think that could cut or hurt somebody if it, you know, kind of brushes against them. So we have, I think, oh, I think a hundred of these things that we're just going to probably just get rid of. Beautiful cord though, man. Look at that. That's, that's gorgeous. This is all of green. If, if you can't tell. Uh, one question that we got already was, can you wash them? Absolutely. Throw them into a mesh bag and you can throw them into the laundry machine. Air dry them. I wouldn't put them in the dryer, but you can also hand wash them. They should be okay. As long as you're in a mesh bag, you don't want this wrapping around the, uh, the washing mas machine, so to speak. But in any event, that is your quick introduction to the Maven strap, how to connect, how to attach, things of that nature. You're going to get huge compliments from whoever sees you wearing this, I promise you, they're gonna they're gonna look at it and they're gonna say, "Holy cow, where did you get that strap?" And you're just gonna say, "I'm a Maven strap beta tester," and uh, we should have them for sale, probably in about maybe two or three weeks, and um, try to figure out which ones are the most popular and get some different colors like this green, desert camo. Pretty much every color you can think of we can get. But any, in any event, I would love to know what you guys think about the Maven straps. Um, we've gone through a lot of work in terms of the... I, I love the straps. I think the straps are good. There may be a little bit lengthening of the loops. Um, I want to know what you guys think about the carabiners. Good idea or bad idea? You know, it, we don't want anybody's cameras being hurt. And if, and if they are, if they're being scratched or if there's a problem with that, we can't use these, you know, as in terms of a camera strap. We'd have to coat it in rubber or something of that nature but that's what a beta test is all about is to get feedback and to find out how we can make the product better i hope you guys enjoy your camera straps and uh, i'm looking forward to hearing from you you can leave comments in this this is really for the beta testers this video this thread information it's set up specifically for you guys who answered my social media request for anybody who wants to try to test them out in any event thank you guys for watching and I can't wait to hear what you think about the straps. I'll be in touch shortly.